should you buy actual racing boots for sim racing? Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm exploring a question which I myself wondered for a very long time and I'm assuming quite a few other sim racers are also wondering and that is do you need these to do that? So over the course of this video we'll be looking at the pros and cons of socks versus shoes for sim racing specifically racing boots and by the end you'll have a better understanding of what might be the best option for you. So with the waffle out the way let's get into it. First of all let's talk about using socks for sim racing. One of the biggest advantages of racing in socks rather than in shoes is the convenience. This is because with socks you can just jump in your rig anytime and go. There's not any hassle with tying up shoelaces, cleaning off dirty soles or trying to even find your shoes. It's just as simple as you want to race? Okay, go sit down, go race. Simple as that. This can save you a little time if you're tight on time. And if you're one of these guys that leaves it to the very last second to grid and makes us all sit there waiting, I very much doubt you have the time to be putting on shoes. So the next pro is precision. With socks, you get added flexibility and tactile feedback from the pedals straight into your foot. Because of this direct foot to pedal plate contact, this can help you with the much more subtle throttle and brake inputs. Also, it may feel a bit more natural and comfortable for you, especially in shorter sessions. So if you're a sim racer who just hops on every now and then casually, isn't too serious about it and potentially is a little bit tight on time, then I can fully understand and recommend using just socks when you race. Over long periods of driving, like in an endurance race when you're doing a long stint, you may experience some fatigue and discomfort in your feet without the extra added support of a shoe. I've personally found that without that extra support, when my feet get tired, my consistency of pedal inputs can be slightly thrown off. Another point to consider is that if you are doing any rallying or just general driving with manual cars and you perform a little bit of complicated footwork such as heel toe downshifting, you may struggle with this in socks. I mean, it depends how big your feet are and what sort of pedals you're using. But me personally, when I try to heel toe downshift in socks, it just hurts. It just doesn't feel good. The side of my foot just gets stabbed by the throttle pedal when I'm trying to blip it. And it's just not a good feeling and I, I wouldn't want to do that over a rally stage in a Group B car when you're doing it like three times every corner. So I hope all of these points apply to you in some way and you find them helpful. And now we'll move on to racing boots. My personal findings with racing boots are that they provide much better support and cushioning which can significantly reduce foot fatigue, tiredness and discomfort and this can be crucial during long stints in endurance races where you need to be consistent and clean. I've also found that on my OMP racing boots the soles are much much grippier than regular shoes are and I actually took the rubber grips off of my pedal plates because the rubber on the soles of the shoe contacting the rubber of the pedal plates was just slipping more than anything. So now without those pedal plates it's just rubber to metal and it's really really grippy. Again I'm talking about both racing boots and just regular shoes but that is a point that does apply to my racing boots which I found to be a benefit over just regular shoes. Obviously that enhanced grip reduces the chances of you slipping on the pedals or messing up in any way which is obviously a benefit. Another great factor of having racing shoes or just regular shoes dedicated to your sim rig is that it keeps all that grime and dirt from outside away from your rig. I'm sure a lot of you can understand this because having spent so much money on such nice gear, why would you want to get it dirty? But I must say, not everything is perfect with racing boots. For example, if you're using lower end pedals, such as the ones that you'd find with the older Logitech setups, such as the G920, G29 and G27, you may feel that using shoes actually reduces your ability to use these pedals effectively. This is because a lot of lower end pedals are quite lightly sprung, they have small pedal faces and the brake is normally not a load cell of any type and it's just a potentiometer which means there's no pressure based braking, it's all dependent on position. Wearing socks with these sort of pedals makes a lot more sense because you need as much feel as possible in order to get the most performance out of them. Now this next point may be a negative for some, may be a positive for others. And that is the time and effort that it can take to put on racing boots in specific before you race. I personally don't mind the effort of getting my racing boots out and putting them on because I do personally feel that they improve my driving to some extent 
and I also like the realism of wearing racing boots whilst I'm racing. I also like to keep my racing boots nice and clean so they always stay in their bag when I'm not using them, which is obviously another thing to undo when you want to access them. So keeping all of this in mind, you have to remember, you don't actually need racing boots. You can just use regular shoes. This video is not meant to be just some big shill about racing boots. I do love my boots and I'm biased towards them, but I'm not telling you in any way to go out and spend lots and lots of money on some big fancy expensive boots just to drive fake race cars on your computer. That part of it is all just personal preference. Now, another aspect that I don't really see anyone talk about is that I think that your skill level and the type of cars you drive also can play a very big part in this decision. For example, LMP2 cars in iRacing require very precise braking as they have no ABS and the rotation on these cars is super dependent on very good braking. This is the exact same with the Porsche Cup car too. On the other hand, GT3 cars benefit from a much smoother and relaxed driving style where you can rely more on the ABS and not worry too much about pinpoint precision in your braking. Me personally, I feel that my braking inputs are much more precise and consistent when I'm wearing shoes. So I choose to wear shoes, especially because I drive the Porsche Cup and the LMP2 a lot more than GT3s. So obviously take this point into consideration, look at what you drive and see how the different options may benefit and negate your abilities. Now, another talking point which I can't really speak on too well but I feel is important is if you have actuators or shakers on the back of your pedals. I haven't actually tried pedals with actuators or shakers on them but I can assume that if you're wearing shoes whilst using pedals like this there's a possibility of reduced feedback from the pedals I suppose straight to your foot. Um, I don't really know how much this is the case I mean I assume with shoes you'd still feel those vibrations but maybe they could be dampened by the sole of the shoe. I'm not entirely sure on this one but it could be something to consider um, if you either have shakers on your pedals already or you're looking at getting shakers down the road. So that one is a little bit subjective but it is something to consider if it applies to you. Lastly something which I feel is quite important is whether or not you have a load cell brake pedal and whether or not you are new to that load cell brake pedal. When I first got my load cell brake pedal coming from a set of Logitech pedals, I can confidently say that it felt so incredibly difficult to compress the brake pedal and get any sort of brake pressure out of it that I just had to wear shoes. Otherwise my feet would genuinely physically hurt from doing it. If you are just getting used to a low tail brake pedal, I'd probably suggest wearing shoes just to sort of break in the pedal a bit, soften it up a little bit over some usage and hopefully your, your feet shouldn't be too tired from using it. Obviously, if you're used to low tail brake pedals or you've had your low tail brake pedal for quite a while, then this probably isn't a point of concern for you. So I don't know, again, this one's just a little bit subjective. It depends on what your experiences are. But definitely, if you are just getting a low tail brake pedal and just getting used to it, I'd probably lean more towards wearing shoes or racing boots whilst you get used to that, just because it makes it a little bit easier. Now, a final little bit of info before I close this video off. I thought I'd just talk a little bit about my racing boots. So I found my racing boots on Vinted for 35 quid, so an absolute steal which I couldn't really pass up, especially since I'd been looking for racing boots for quite a while. Having bought mine so cheaply, I may be slightly biased towards them. Uh, had I maybe paid a higher price that you'd be looking at for some brand new ones, then maybe my opinions could be a little different, but I very much doubt it. I must say though, I definitely do prefer my racing boots over regular shoes. They have a few features which I think sets them apart from regular shoes and I'll show you them now. So first of all, I don't know how well I'm holding this for the camera, um, but you can see that the sole is almost entirely flat. I mean, it's just smooth rubber with some little uh, slits in it. There's basically no tread on it whatsoever, uh, like a regular shoe. And this is something you'll find in any racing boot. Um, but yeah, that gives a lot of grip. Um, and also it's quite easy to clean off if you pick up any dust because there's no grooves for the dust or dirt to get into. So you just wipe it off and they're nice and clean. Another key part of these is definitely the heel. This is also something that you'll find on, I think, pretty much any racing boots, like karting boots, wherever you choose. Um, basically, you'll find that the heel comes up the shoe a lot more than you'd find on just regular shoes. 
This is obviously because if you have your heel plate like this, that's your heel resting on it. So this is something I found when I raced with socks in long endurance stints, my heel from being rested against the heel plate like that would get really tired and quite painful. So having that support from the racing boot, very nice. My boots are also very narrow, which I really appreciate because I have generally quite narrow feet anyways, uh, but it just enables me to have really good precision on the pedals, not press two at once or anything like that, and just be confident with my foot placement, almost as if I wasn't wearing them. And my final point as to why I like these so much is they're racing boots. I mean, why do we do this hobby? We do this hobby because we want to drive race cars. A lot of us can't afford to actually drive race cars. I mean, this is a really nice setup right here that I've got. I'm very lucky to be able to have it. I'm not lucky enough to be able to drive real race cars, but every single little bit I can do to sort of bring this experience closer to real race cars, I will take. And racing boots are definitely an example of that. Just having something like this, it just kind of brings that little tiny bit of realism that sort of brings you into the dream a bit more, brings you sort of into the immersion and kind of makes you feel like, yeah, I am a racing driver. Maybe you'll find that a little corny. I don't know. I feel like most of us sim racers, the whole reason we're doing this is because we want to drive real race cars. But yeah, I just thought that was sort of an important point to mention because it is definitely something that applies to me and part of the reason I wanted racing boots for a long time anyways. So then, with all of that, are racing boots really worth it for sim racing? This really does depend on your preferences and your setup. If you prioritise just convenience and shorter sessions, then I think socks are probably the way to go. However, if you're someone like me who takes part in endurance races like the Nürburgring 24 last weekend, that was very tiring, then I can personally vouch for wearing either regular shoes or racing boots in the sim. That added bit of support that I mentioned on the heel is absolutely great for reducing fatigue when you're racing. And I feel like just having a pair of shoes that is dedicated to your racing and your racing only, one, adds that little bit of immersion, and two, sort of just brings that consistency that is really needed for good racing. Now remember, there is no one-size-fits-all answer. I suggest you try both options, as I have. I've raced in both regular shoes, socks, and racing boots over the past year or so of my sim racing career. So everything I'm saying in this video is coming from experience and not just me chatting a bunch of waffle. Like I said, just try different things out and see what works best for you. I really appreciate you all watching this. I really hope I was able to help some of you. Um, and please do let me know if you want any sort of content similar to this in the future. If you did find this video helpful, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the track.